September. They had already uh, they had already started working on Fall 17, and we only finished it um, a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, I think. Yeah, two weeks ago. So uh, I'd say just a little over a year. Uh, like I said, it takes a while to get the samples back, and you have to have merchants come from all around the world, and you have to look at them, you have to make these changes, and you have to send it out again. So it, it takes a while. It definitely takes a while. Yeah. yeah. How many uh, shoes are you working on, like per season at a time? Me personally. Yeah, or like your team, I guess. Um, I'll I'll be working on around sixty shoes per season. Um, not and and that doesn't mean all new new design uppers by me. And, and obviously, I'm kind of was in a unique experience being at Timberland because of the six inch boot. We do they do so much on that one classic boot, so it's just spinning colors and materials on that. So it's not. You know, it's not too time consuming to spin like 20, 20 different six inch boots at Timberland. Um, but yeah, I would tend to take on like about 60 shoes I'd be responsible for. Some new, some completely new designs as far as outsole or the upper, some just spinning new colors on existing patterns. Um, the whole the whole team, like the whole design team overall, how many we would do a season? Man, I don't know. I, I, it's in the hundreds. I, like, I would, it would be a, a shot in the dark. Either. Guessing maybe like 300. There's a lot. There's there's, a, there's six different teams I think, and we each do you know about 100 shoes. So maybe it's, maybe like five, six hundred to be honest. It's a lot. Uh, yeah, orange hat. Um, so I, I have a question. Maybe off the record, but uh, I know people who are really into the six inch group, and uh, more specifically, like I, my stepdad wears them consistently. He says that the quality has changed over the last few years. Uh, they don't work with the it's got nothing to do with me, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how much change has happened to you in terms of like, um, not necessarily the design, but like materials. Like, obviously, new materials come into play, but um, maybe even what we have more of is like how much of like the consumer feedback is taken into account on the design side. Like, do you deal with any direct feedback or is that like an HR thing? No, I mean, I, we, we definitely get feedback. I mean, that a lot of times, that, that's usually coming, the merchants will give us that customer feedback a lot of the time. They'll, they'll go out and they'll get the feedback, they'll do polls and stuff like that, and that's when the merchants come in, and that's how they know what they want to give us. Man, as far as quality goes, uh, I'm going to give a real PC answer and say Turlin stands by the quality of its products and it's stands with its heritage. I, I honestly, you know, I, I don't know, man. Uh, I, 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 I got here yesterday and got my hair cut at a barbershop down here and, and all the guys were yelling at me because when they started buying that Turlin boot, it was like $120 and now it's $190 and they're yelling at me like, you know, I decided that. I don't know, some things are out of my control, but, uh, you know, the, there's definitely still uh, a lot of good products we think good quality stuff, for sure. Yeah? When you design a pair of shoes and you take it to your team, how much of it gets changed in collaboration and can you still call it like your own design or is it more of the team's design? Um, it's definitely, there's definitely collaboration at all, at all times really between the design. I mean, you're not, you're not going to take a project from start to finish and not show it to anyone and put it out here. You know, I I bought like that's where I was talking about like I was an intern and you saw all those different levels of designers, um, so it, it, it tends to get run through everyone. Uh, like that creative director, or that senior director of a team, uh, will usually make the final decisions. And if they have some input, they say try this. You're you're going to try that. Um, as far as like who takes credit for a design, uh, you, you, you kind of have an idea. I mean, whoever came up with the initial idea, whoever had the most impact on it, I, I can't think of a time where it was like, people were like arguing or couldn't decide like who whose shoe this was. You know, it doesn't really, yeah. from my experience, at least that hasn't happened. It, it, there's a lot of collaboration, but obviously like we're all working on, on the same team. We're all trying to make it, you know, be as best good as possible, the best product as possible, so. Um, Usually, that, that my team at Timberland consisted of eight designers, and so they usually all had some input on whatever I was working on, for sure. And I had input for whatever they were working on. Real team effort. Anyone else? Yeah? Do you expect a similar situation design team wise at Colon? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, yeah. 
I, I, don't, I can't tell you too much because I haven't started, but from what I've been told, uh, and I, I know I'm working with, uh, I, part of the reason I ended up getting a, that gig is uh, because some Timberland people went there that I'm going to be working with. Um, so I expect the process to be pretty similar. But I mean, we'll see. I, I know it's still working with tech packs. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'm sure there'll be some differences too. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, is there ever a disconnect between the design portion and the uh, engineering, like the look versus the, the uh, Definitely. effectiveness? Those, Those guys, guys get so mad at us. I just had one of the engineers come and come into my desk, you know, red faced, screaming at me uh, this past week, uh, yelling. I mean, it gets it gets heated because uh, obviously as designers, I mean, we want to do things that don't look like anything else and you know look really cool and, and, and really shake things up and uh, yeah a lot of the times that's just not possible like there are things that you just can't pull off because of the shape of the foot or the way something's going to fit or the way it's going to feel and those engineers are the guys that those are the experts on that so they can look at a drawing and uh, and be like no this there's just no way whether it's the top line of something it's the way way things are moving away something would fold um, so there's definitely some back and forth um, you, you end up working it out, but you it's, it's all compromised, and, it, and that's why we go through those rounds of samples. So it's like, you know, he says something, he's worried about something working, and I'm like, I really want to try it. And it's early, you know, the first or second round of, of sampling of prototypes. We'll be like, all right, you know, let's give it a try, and we'll go from there. It's, it's a lot easier to work, obviously, in three dimensions off the sample than it is uh, 2D off of the drawing. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's all up. But yeah, there's definitely some, some back and forth. But, you know, that's how it is. Two, two completely different minds working on the same project, you know? Yeah. Um, I was wondering, I guess, kind of going off of that, do you ever have any, like, people who are more traditional, like, who maybe have been working there for a very long time, who um, resist, like, big changes in your designs? Because I know, um, I mean, I don't know the history of Timberland that much, but I feel like just very recently it started to become more like a, like a fashion statement as opposed to mm -hmm. just like a work food. Mm -hmm. So I'd be interested to know, like, is there kind of like a, I don't know, like old school versus like the new stuff that's... Yeah, I, I, would, I would say there definitely is. I mean, it, uh, there's some designers that have been there for, you know, 30 years, uh, and then there's guys, you know, like me that are, uh, you know, just getting into the world of footwear and really want to do you know different looking stuff and we we're all really interested in what's trendy right now and a lot of that's athletic stuff so it was like terminal like that that shoe that I'm passing yeah, so around. I saw uh, this, is it said like Roshi run or something on like the tech pack as Right. Yeah, exactly because it was like our inspiration for it. Yeah. So um yeah there were people that cringed at that, that design I think like when I first showed it to them but um you know, there, there's a lot of good people there, and there's a lot of people that definitely know the, the heritage and the DNA of the brand and, and want to preserve that, but also understand where things are going and the idea of pushing things forward. And I, I, again, that's that's compromise. Like that's just that's like the whole the whole idea behind this like collaboration and design is a lot, a lot of it. You have to compromise. Like I have to make compromises when I'm designing. Um, if I'm pushing something too far, and they say, "Hey, this this is not." Timberland. Okay, so I have to I have to dial it back. I have to you know relate it back to the DNA, um, and then they have to make compromises too. They have to understand that you know what that times are changing and things trend and, and you know people wear different things and there hasn't been like a lot of backlash as far as like keeping up with like you know what what's popular right now. Yeah, I guess it kind of goes off that and maybe question for the student panel too is like you think they took you on because your portfolio reflected your something that they were looking to add to the I think I think part of the reason they were excited to have me is just because I was a young guy out of college interested in really interested in design and there's a, there's a bunch of us there and, and a lot of times us young guys are the ones that come to and, and all aspects of the company it's funny like even in the clothing and other parts of the brand they come and find us young designers because they know that we look at things that they aren't really familiar with as, you know, that's in design and they're, you know, we, we bring something different and they, they know that. And also, sorry, I'd like to press you on but, um, so we have some students who are like with graphic design and like fashion design background, so you just mentioned sometimes like the clothing department will come to you just like, do you like shoot some ideas around, so mm -hmm. how much collaboration do you have with not just like footwear design or like 
maybe some of the other people in the audience who don't are you know, designers specifically, like mm -hmm. something that you take away? Yeah, um, I mean, there, there's a collaboration across the board because um, when you're working for for one company all together, even if you're working in these different fields, like at the end of the day, you're putting products out at the same time from the same company, and you want them to sit together to some degree. And that means working with the clothing. That means working with the marketing. It all needs to come together in the end. Um, the clothing. Uh, designers will come up with prints and stuff like that and we'll try to incorporate it into like the footbeds of the shoes or somewhere on the shoe. Uh, there's all kinds of little little details and stuff like that uh, that we try to share with each other. There's definitely a lot of communication uh, between us and, and really just like throughout the whole company uh, so that things make sense at the end of the day. There's, there's a lot of that, yeah, for sure. Uh, do you have, this is kind of a general question, but do you have any advice on like your process of getting that internship or going about getting an internship in the field? Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, portfolio is, is huge. I mean, they, they, when I got there, when, when I got hired, they told me specifically which projects it was that really stood out to them for my portfolio that they, why they wanted to bring me there. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know how to answer that. Um, a lot of it was was luck. I mean, I you know it was chance. I mean, I I was looking all over the place. You got to really stay on it. You got to be looking every day. I mean, even you guys, like I, you're probably all different different years here. But uh, you know, you don't have to wait until senior years to start looking, especially if you're looking for internships. Like, be on it all the time. Like, it's not hard. You know, you have the internet. Like, it's not hard to keep up on like openings popping up. Uh, just stay on it, um, and. Make sure uh, that you show them that you're passionate about it. Um, I interviewed to intern at Timberland back in October, and I, I Skype interviewed with them, and I didn't end up getting it. And I was lucky enough that they called me back when another internship uh, popped up. And this time I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna drive up to New Hampshire. And I'm gonna interview in person for this one, and and that's when I ended up getting it. I, I, they told me that that meant a lot me going up there. So you know, it's definitely. Your work is the most important, I would say. And, but you know, your your passion, your work ethic. If you're trying to get in somewhere that is really the field that you want to be in, make it known. I mean, when I when I interviewed there, I told them, listen, I've wanted to do footwear since I was a kid. I told them stories about you know, like throughout my childhood about like how I knew I wanted to do footwear up until you know graduating college. And uh, there's there's no reason not to make that known. Like sell yourself, you know, let them know that like you're really. You're really interested in this. You really want to be here. Anyone else? Yeah. I have two questions. The first one is, uh, I need to know about your background before you build Mr. Design. And second thing is, what's your favorite shoe brand? First question is, what was my background? Before uh, industrial design. Before industrial design. Before yeah. I came here. Yeah. Um, I, I actually transferred here. I went to school at uh, Savannah College of Art and Design in Georgia before this, and I was I was going there for fine art. I went to went to high, uh, charter high school for fine art. I was really interested in drawing and stuff like that. Uh, um, I didn't know about industrial design at all, and I I, I was always interested in doing footwear. Um, and when I, I was also interested in painting and stuff like that. And when I realized, you know, I don't know if I want to paint my whole life, I was like, all right, I, I started doing research. What what do I have to do? What do I have to go to school for to be to be a footwear designer? And that's how I ended up here in, in industrial design. Uh, as far as my favorite footwear company, Cole Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Did you have another? Yeah. Um, so being a footwear designer um, is a little bit more specific in terms of soft goods. Do you feel like the transition to other soft goods related fields as a designer would be a similar experience? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of differences as far as like fittings. You know, there's there's a lot that goes specifically into footwear, uh, just as far as you know how, how things are going to fit and stuff like that. But um, yeah, man, I I would say if you're interested in doing soft goods as a as a career, get started on it while you're here. Um, I when I was a when I was a senior here, I worked on a, a clothing uh, project for my senior project here, and uh, it, that's when I. First, did tech packs and, and stuff like that, and uh, they told me when I got hired that that was the project that you know 
wanted them to have me there because I had done tech packs before and stuff like that. So yeah, if you're interested in, the, in, in this field, there's a lot of similarities and, and get started on it early. And even if you're not doing, you know, if you wanted to do footwork or wanted to try doing bags or clothing or something like that, you're still going to learn a lot about some of those processes that will carry over. Get started as early as you can, for sure. Yeah? How many interns did you say were at Timberland at the moment, and uh, how many turned those into full-time positions? Um, there, there are four at a time. There's a women's, there's a casual team, which is what I do, casual on weekdays, like dress shoes, boots. Um, there's an outdoor team, so that do, do hiking and stuff like that, and there is a sport leisure team, which does a kind of sport your sneaker looking stuff. Um, as far as how many of them turned into full-time positions, um, there have been three other people there while I was there. Uh, one of them got a full-time job with Terminal, two didn't, two left, and I obviously ended up leaving mine early to go somewhere else. I, I don't know what would have happened with mine. Um, it's definitely not guaranteed, um, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, you know, because I've learned a ton, and uh, you know, you get so much experience and you build your resume. Um, but you know, sometimes there's just not room in the budget to keep everyone, so some, some of those guys had to leave. Um, but you know, it's, it's still a great experience. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, just because you don't, you don't know if you're going to get kept on at the end. Sure. Anyone else? No? All right. Cool. Thanks, guys. I'm done.